Welcome back. So now that we're officially out of the shop and moved up to the airport on Wednesday, uh, De Devon and Jeff were uh, busy uh, working on the foreplane and getting it ready for the next round of primer. And as you can see, Jeff's using the air tool there with uh, no problems with that portable compressor that I picked up. And uh, meanwhile, I was getting all set up and all my ducks lined up so I could uh, get the engine mounted back onto the fuselage. And uh, being pretty exhausted, I got out of there about 4 o'clock on Wednesday. But I had everything sorted out and figured out my plan. And so now we're on to uh, Thursday morning. And um, uh, Jeff and Devin took the day off to recover from the last stress of last week with all the moving and stuff. And uh, I got a hold of the forklift there from uh, the airport. And uh, spent the morning just in there on my own. And uh, getting the engine unhooked from the uh, stand initially. So just four bolts holding it on. And uh, so not too difficult to uh, get it off of there. Just making sure that, you know, you get it nicely balanced. And even so when the bolts come out, it doesn't sort of, you know, bump around or fall or anything like that. And, uh, you know, I wanted to try and get it nice and even. So when it came off, I didn't have to try and adjust it or repick it or anything like that. So uh, here you can see I'm just about to get, um, I think, one of the second bolts out. Yeah, it's starting to get pretty loose there. I've got all the weight on the forklift. And the classic old forklift they have there, it runs on about two cylinders. But uh, yeah, managed to uh, do the job. So this, I think, by about um, 10.30 or something, I had it off of the stand. And uh, yeah not too difficult a little bit scary when you're just the only one doing it yeah, as you can see <laughs> when you're the only one there just got to be very super careful and uh, don't do anything too risky so and it takes longer when you're the only one there d doing it because uh, you have to um, you know get out and check everything get out and check everything if there's somebody else there they could just say okay up down move around whatever and uh, have it all sorted out so there you go you can see I got it off the stand and time to sort of move it into place there at the back of the aircraft so I just brought it in and uh, tried to get it lined up as best I could with my plan being that I would probably move the aircraft to match the engine um, because it would be less sort of swaying around as what you're seeing there so I got it pretty close with the stand and uh, you can see I've just got it back a little ways and I'm getting things there like the um, the dryer for the AC system installed and the lines hooked up there because I had to go in very last. And uh, so I got that done and all, you know, anything else that I could get done before I actually made it back up to the firewall I got done. And uh, here you can see I've uh, just about got it ready there. This is a small gap in there between the, uh, the actual mounting bracket and the firewall but I've got it nicely lined up and I did end up just sort of pushing the fuselage around into, into place uh, to get it you know exactly where I wanted it to be as you can see here so I just had to drop it just a tiny bit a couple of times there and then just move the rotate the fuselage around a little bit and just pushing it up against it and again all the time just making sure that I'm not sort of you know getting any wires or anything like that you know um, trapped up in there or any of the hoses or anything like that and then of course I got the four bolts that I have to put in so uh, my goal was to try and get the top ones in first and then go with the bottom ones but they kind of went the other way really but there you can see I got the top one in there and the bottom ones there and then one goes one way and one goes the other way because of the cross brace and over on the other side there I got the other one in and uh, it was about lunchtime at that point when I got that done so I started to sit down and uh, quickly eat my lunch and the guy showed up and they said oh we need the forklift and I said well your timing's perfect because I just finished <laughs> so we unhooked it and uh, there it is all bolted up but uh, now I got to do all the rest of the plumbing as you can see heater hoses and such and uh, by the end of the day this is basically how it was so the only thing left to do there was to put the last upper cross brace there on this side that you see is missing but everything else all the wiring harness and everything else was all hooked up and uh, ready to go 
So, a successful day. And as you know, most of you have been following along, you can see again that, uh, yeah, it's a pretty complicated engine, but then again, look at all your latest, late model uh, car engines too. There's nothing simple about those. So, this is what happens when you move into the future. Things get complicated um, as they get more features. Anyway, so now we're on to Friday and uh, time to put the prop on. No sense waiting, so had everything else sorted out. So uh, Jeff just lifted it into place and then I forgot there that uh, we needed to um, put a little bit of uh, oil again just on the uh, little O-ring seal there for uh, where the oil comes through from the, the redrive. And uh, just to let you know, you know, after we got this all running and stuff I still have uh, a leak in the redrive there it's, it's sort of leaking around the seam so I'm gonna try um, this gasket maker stuff that um, they recommend for you know oil sumps oil pans where you don't actually have a gasket and uh, with the Audi engine has the same type of thing where you don't actually have a gasket you just put the, um, the sealant all the way around the edge of the oil pan and then you just basically bolt it on so I'm going to try a similar sort of stuff for this redrive and see if I can uh, get rid of this uh, oil leak. Um, and other than that, we had a little, I found a little bit of a leak in the fuel system on the vent line. Uh, so we just have to re-flare um, one of the hard lines there that goes from the top of the header tank to the vent system. So that's going to happen probably next week. And uh, the only other squawk that i found so far is for some reason on the radios. It seems to be like, doesn't matter what frequency I tune in, it, it always seems to be receiving something. And it, you see, you hear static all the time. And I think, it, I thought it was the squelch. But actually, when you look on the radio, you can actually see on the Garmin that it's saying RX like it's receiving. And there's really no nothing coming in other than static. So I haven't figured out what's causing that yet. But anyway, try and work it out. And uh, as you can see, Devin and Jeff are making some good progress on the foreplane here. They've got the uh, next round of primer on there, and now they're just uh, filling in some of the spots there that were a little rough. And so after lunch, I pushed the aircraft out onto the ramp, and this is what it looks like just sitting out there. So kind of looking kind of nice. I was actually... It's the first time I've actually seen it sort of sitting out in the sun with the engine on and the prop on and being able to look at it from a distance as when we had it in the shop before you're always kind of close up on it and here you can kind of just get a a nice feel of uh of how it's going to look looks a little weird with you know missing the wings and the foreplane but it won't be too long and they'll be on so um, and this is a little bit after i've already run the engine a couple of times here but uh, just to show you starting it up and the first time i actually went to start it up I tried not to start it up. I had the fuel pump off and the actual fuel turned off and uh, just went to turn it over to start building up some oil pressure and it fired up first time <laughs> with a residual fuel from, you know, a month ago <laughs> or however long ago it was that we ran the engine. I think it was at least a month. So, uh, yeah, it's that Audi engine something else <laughs> for a diesel that it just fires up just like that. Um, so, anyway, as you can see, it didn't doesn't take much to start it up and I let it run for a while several times and uh, warmed it up and I was a bit concerned that I didn't have the um, all the coolant system sort of bled through yet because you know I hooked up the heater loop now that runs you know two hoses all the way down the keel and up through into the central uh, AC system in the front there and definitely didn't have enough fluid to fill that up in there so it's one of those things you need to look, run the engine for a while and get it to to pump all the way around there and then try and bleed the air out so I wasn't I was just monitoring the temperatures there carefully and making sure the engine wasn't getting too hot because it didn't have enough coolant in it um, and just let it warm up and then I'd stop it and then I'd see if I could you know bleed some of the air out of the cooling system so I worked through that a couple of different times and uh, managed to make some progress and um, as I said ended up uh, after doing some uh, harder runs there on the engine ended up finding that leak again in the redrive and I'll try and uh, fix that with this uh, with that sealant that I mentioned and uh, apart from that everything was good brakes are working really well the handbrake or the parking brake is uh, 
working well there. Didn't have any problems with that. And was able to hold the aircraft still even under, or even up to about 3000 RPM. It wasn't moving at all. So I'm pretty happy with the brakes. And uh, after all that, decided it was time to take it for a little spin around the block. And uh, next week, I'll be working through the squawks and uh, Jeff and Devin will be uh, working more on the foreplane and wings. And I may get to doing some of the gear doors and such. So anyway, I'll leave you with this little lap around the block. Thanks for watching.